is the purpose of your trip to Mexico? This time, I'm, I'm, I've been involved with the branch here from the very beginning. I work at Asian Jerusalem for many years. Um, this trip in particular is mainly focused on training new rabbis that want to be involved in reaching out and educating people in the community. When we started the branch here, we started with one rabbi. We brought on a second rabbi a few years later, and we realized there's so many people that are just thirsty for a new way of presenting Judaism. And our rabbis are too busy. We can't, they can't meet everybody. So we're training now a whole group of another set of rabbis to go out and reach out and be involved in the schools and the synagogues to try and spread the message of Judaism to the people that are interested in wanting to know more about it. Knowing the name of the lecture you're going to give today, what do you think about what is happening to the Jewish community in Israel and around the world? It's a very good question. Um, the lecture is, li is really why bad things happen to good people. And um, we look at ourselves as a community, especially these days. We look at the war we just had in, in Gaza, and we think we are, we're trying to be the good guys. We didn't start this war. We're trying to minimize damage. And yet the whole world looks at us as the bad guys. And then not only Israel, around the world is anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism and uh, burning Israeli flags. So... I think from a, as a rabbi, I have to say that I try and look at it the same way I look at everything else in Jewish history. When we look at the temple being destroyed thousands of years ago, we didn't just look at it as a political, military battle. We didn't look at it just as uh, the Romans, the Assyrians. We always ask the question, why did we deserve this? You look at all of history and we look at all the miracles. So there's positive miracles coming out of Egypt, experiencing you know miracles in our history that we survived and then there's negative miracles the holocaust is a negative miracle meaning it was so unusual that you can't just say well politics what happened in as in gaza this past summer wasn't just politics so when i look deeper i try and understand if god's really orchestrating history what's the message he's trying to give us through what's going on and i think there's many messages when you look at it from the perspective of what would be God's purpose? What would be God's message? I think there's many messages you can get. One message, one of many, is that when events happen, like what happened in Gaza, and these three boys got kidnapped, and that started the whole thing, I think almost every Jew in the world felt, this is part of my family. I don't know the boys, they're strangers, I've never heard of them before, but this is my family. And I think when Jews around the world don't see each other as family, and we start to separate, or we start hating each other, or judging each other, Sometimes, unfortunately, we need a war or a tragedy to bring us together. So I can't speak on behalf of God and say why God, what God's plans are. I can say that as negative as it was, there are good things that come out of it, and we have to see the positive lessons we can learn from it. And uh, how do you see the Judaism, the religious part of the Judaism in the world? Is it growing? Is it stays the same? It's going down? You know, it's interesting. There was last year there's a, a major survey that was done in America called the Pew Study. And they studied religious affiliation among Jews in America. So they found something shocking. They found that the Orthodox Jewish community is growing. At the same time, overall assimilation is getting higher and higher. They found that among non Orthodox Jews in America, there's a 71% rate of intermarriage. So to me, it means is the religious world getting stronger? Yeah, the Orthodox community is having a lot of children and they're learning a lot, and there's a lot of yeshivot in a lot of schools. But unfortunately, there's a middle growing where people are either leaving or they're really staying. There's not a lot of people that are halfway through. So the Orthodox world is growing, but we look at it as a problem that there's so many brothers and sisters we have that aren't connected and are marrying out and are losing, losing connection with Judaism. So we look at it as an obligation to at least give people the opportunity. You know, if, if a person decides they, wanna, they don't want to be involved Jewishly because they know what it is and they've made a decision it's not for them, okay, that's, that's their choice. But for somebody to decide not to be Jewishly connected when they never even had a chance to explore what it is, that's a, I would say that it's, it's a spiritual tragedy. For them, it's a personal tragedy, but it's also a national tragedy that we're losing so many Jews just out of, out of ignorance. And how do you see the Jewish community in Mexico? 
Mexico is an interesting place because I travel a lot. I've been, to, I've, I've given lectures in 20 countries around the world, um, and I see a lot of different styles of communities. The first thing that amazes me about Mexico is how little anti-Semitism there is. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see like where are all the Arabs going to come from and start burning flags on the streets like they're doing everywhere else in the world right now. So it's a curiosity to me because usually in countries where there's a lot of anti-Semitism, it somehow wakes Jews up. Jews feel they have to defend themselves, they have to know what they believe in. Jews get more, in, they either leave <laughs> and come to Israel or they get more Jewishly involved. In Mexico, even without that negative push, for some reason, I see a tremendous wave of more and more people. Every time I come here, I see more and more people interested in learning more about Judaism. So it's not coming from a negative of people having to defend themselves. There's just a genuine interest in people wanting to, to explore their Judaism more. It's, it's, it's very, I, I'm very, I'm very uh, it's inspiring for me to see. And would you like to give some words? For, oh, for the readers. For the readers. For the readers. Um, yeah, I would say I would say Judaism is a journey, and I would say that it's a mistake to think that either you're there and you're connected or you're not connected. I think we, I look at all Jews and I say we're all on a ladder. We're all on a ladder, and some are starting at a small, a lower point. Some are starting at a higher point. Everyone should see themselves as trying to grow closer to their understanding of what Judaism is. I say there's, you know, in America they have there's Reform Jews and conservative Jews and Orthodox Jews. I say there's a much better division. There's Jews who are growing because they care and they want to learn more, and there's Jews who aren't so serious and they don't really care. So there's no reason every Jew can't be serious enough to at least explore and learn a little bit more and see what it means to them. Thank you very much, Rabbi. My pleasure.